Today I want to talk about the proper way to hook up a trailer to a truck and a tractor or any kind of a piece of equipment to a trailer. Let's come on up here first. You always want to make sure you've got the right size ball for the right size coupler. This happens to be a bulldog coupler. It has a sleeve on it. When you secure the coupler, this is a two inch ball, two inch coupler. You always want to make sure that there's a pin in your coupler to keep the sleeve from going back or whatever different kind of coupler you have. That's one thing. Number two, make sure you hook up your cha safety chains. Safety chains should be crossed like this. And the reason is because that creates a cradle if something should happen that will fall into that cradle. Next thing you want to do is to make sure your electric is plugged in properly. This trailer happens to have brakes. So we have something called a breakaway cable. That cable should be hooked to the bumper or the hitch on the truck, not, not the chain, but right to the hitch. We put, we put a little turnbuckle on there so it's easy for the customer to hook it up. We do this every time. I like to run this through uh, the, the clip on the coupler because it keeps the electric wires and the cable off the ground. Jack up. Handle of the jack turned down. This really doesn't do a lot, but supposedly these factories, there's a little more resistance when it's like this. This is what you call a breakaway switch. Do not buy a trailer without brakes, if it's a tandem axle, or a breakaway switch. A lot of folks will sell a trailer to you and it's cheaper, it doesn't have brakes. Most of the trailers that we sell have two brakes. Now sometimes you only need one, but usually we have a brake on both axles. This breakaway switch, should you get into an accident and this pull out, that locks up the brakes. I'm going to plug this back in real fast because I don't want it to get hot. has to be secured. If you leave that unplugged, the wires will get hot because that current is coming right from this battery box. Make sure you have a good, strong battery in your box because that's your safety. Always make sure that the front of your trailer is a little bit higher than the back. And the reason for that, there's two or three reasons, but the first reason is, is you might get a little extra weight in there. You do not want the front of your trailer lower. That's number one, it's plowing air. And if your front of your trailer is too low, you could be putting more wear on this tire than this tire. I've seen cases where people overload their trailers the front end's low, and this tire and wheel hardly touches the ground. If you have a trailer with brakes, now this trailer has brakes on both axles, but sometimes they'll just have brakes on the back axle. Let's say that your back end of your trailer is too high, front end is too low, you put your brakes on, it's not even working. So, number one, you got bad trailer wear, you're plowing air, and you don't have good control of your truck. The other exaggeration would be if your coupler is too high. If that coupler is too high, the front tire's off the ground, and the back tire is taking all the weight. So you want to make sure that trailer is at the very worst level, but you always want the front a little bit higher. If this were an enclosed trailer, and you had your front end lower, not only is it plowing air, if you have the front end of the trailer a hair higher, it's actually helping with the lift a little bit because the air is coming up underneath. So it's just a good thing to remember. We have this gate down just so I can show you how this is hooked up. If you're hauling something heavy, like a tractor, this is a small tractor, you want to use chains 
and some kind of a turnbuckle or a cantilever like this. If you notice, We've got a special hook on the back of the tractor. You don't want to be wrapping it around something that moves. You want it on something immovable. You want to pull your weight back and pull your weight forward. If you're pulling side to side, side to side, that tractor can move. If you've got tension here and tension up there, it won't move forward or back. I like putting the chain through the mechanism for the bucket. And the reason is, is because it's solid and man, it's not going anywhere. It's a little bit of a pain because you have to take, maybe you have to take your, your hook off, but it's worth it. You don't want to hook your tractor up to anything that's going to scratch. To me, it's just not smart to try to hook it under here because you hit a bump that could fly off. This is not going anywhere. And since we're sitting here, if you happen to be hooking up a lawnmower, see that? That's there for a reason. That's there to take your strap or chain and pull the lawnmower back and pull the lawnmower forward. We like to hook here or somewhere around here, but this is a good place to hook that. You don't want to be putting a chain or a strap over your deck or anywhere around here it can slide. You don't want any chance of this equipment sliding back and forth. It jolts. It's terribly dangerous. If you notice, the weight is over the tires and slightly um, more weight in front of the tire than in the back. The reason that is, again, you want tongue weight. When you have tongue weight, you've got control. If, if that tractor was further back, even if your trailer was level and you don't have tongue weight, that's going to do this going down the road. You do not want that. You want tongue weight because it gives you control. Another thing, if you have too much tongue weight, and man, we saw a trailer yesterday and we all kind of held our breath a little bit because it was a dump trailer overloaded. The front end of the pickup truck was doing this. The back end of the pickup truck was squatted and the coupler was maybe three or four inches off the ground. The problem with that is, is your front tires have no control. That you get into a slippery situation, that truck's going in the ditch. You want your front tires to grab the road. You want your back tires to grab the road. You want your front tire to make contact and cause a little friction and your back tire. Let's say you're pulling through ice or snow. Your front tire plows the snow. The back tire stays in the rut. The tires on your trailer may not be the same width on the, as the trailers on the truck. This is why it's important to have this trailer hooked up properly and your brakes in place. Uh, brake controllers have a function and the function is called a toggle switch. If you're going down a hill you want to use that toggle switch sometimes because it will activate your trailer brakes, not your truck. Trailer brakes will slow the truck down. If you just, if you have truck brakes and no grab on your trailer, you could fishtail. Normally, if you're going downhill with a little bit of ice, it's not a problem because your brake controller will apply the pressure that you want. And we're going to have another video on how to set your brake controller. You don't, want, you don't want to lock up your brakes and you don't want them too light. This gate has a little bit of weight, but, but, not, but not much. And when we loaded this, we loaded it in a fashion that there was plenty of weight again on the tongue. But don't forget, when you lift that weight up, it's going to add that gate, it's going to add a little bit of weight to the back 
a little less in the tongue. So just don't forget. Uh, this is important things, folks. It's something that we are careful to tell our customers when they come. We don't just sell you something and, sh and shove you down the road. It's so important. Please ask questions. Consult these videos. Hopefully we'll have videos on everything before too long. And don't be afraid to call us. There's always a half a dozen people here at the store. And man, we're glad to uh, help you prevent a problem. Thank you so much.